I'm Ollie. I'm an Obtainium engineer and jack of all trades. And I'm here at the Friars Forest Research and Development Workshop converting Cellar Dairy's 1968 Toyota Stout to electric. It's day nine, bit of drama yesterday. Had some success, got the uh, the seal back in the, uh, the end of the gearbox and got the handbrake back on and everything. So that's still sitting on the bench waiting to go in. I haven't put that in yet. Uh, but we fell down a rabbit hole yesterday with the, with the diff. I think I mentioned how much I love diffs. And I made a major mistake. I broke a bolt last night, as you know, the main carrier bolt. And it was my fault. It wasn't the manuals. The, the torque specification I was reading was out of the wrong manual. I have a Dyna manual here. I have an RK110 manual from 1980. And I have an earlier, I think it's a 1970, I'll have to check in a sec. But this was my dad's manual and it's quite damaged and the covers are missing and there's a bit of water damage and stuff. And unfortunately in the diff section, there is some damage in that book. And so I've been reading from these uh, other two, <clears throat> which have a hell of a lot in common, but, <laughs> but not the same. Read the fucking manual, read the right manual. I was reading these other manuals a bit because they shed a lot of light on the process better than this, this early stout manual doesn't and this manual here, which is probably the most relevant one to be reading from seven to nine kilogram meters. I really screwed up taking it to 24. Gotta make sure you take torque specifications from the right one. Oops. I'm glad I didn't keep going last night. Maybe that was a, you know, it's too late, you should have gone to bed thing. Anyway, while I was doing lash with the new bolts, uh, I discovered that it was all notchy and nasty and so I pulled it apart and found that the main pinion bearings were buggered. So we're going to put that diff aside and we're going to go back and get the other diff that is a good runner that I have that's in spare in plastic that we went and got last night and then we put back. <laughs> and we're going to put that in. Anyway, uh, day nine. Let's live and learn and get this damn electrification project back towards electrical stuff rather than uh, the massive excursion into uh, mechanical drivetrain brake stuff that wasn't really where I was intending to head. So, um, yeah, let's get that diff back in. I'm not going to say what else we're going to do today. <laughs> let's just get the bloody diff and axles working. So I just grabbed this diff out of the shed actually. It's one of the diffs that I said was rusty and too far gone. But it's actually surface rust. I think this was rebuilt by Ollie. I'm mad, I'm sure. Um, I'm gonna clean the surface rust off it. I'm gonna put this in because I love diff problems, right? holding in the pinion uh, was partly undone and the crush nut at the back wasn't done up and the axle seal isn't new so very much doubt it's been rebuilt and the tightness in things is probably just the rust so I am gonna take it all apart yeah see how those main bearings look to see whether because we've only got one seal left diff seal so I want to put it in the one that's uh, gonna work Okay, 
We've got the whole thing apart. <laughs> I'm gonna get the pinion preload right and set the depth, the shims are there. I've got the manual procedure. Uh, the bearings look good, and that's the one thing I don't have. I probably should have had a spare set of bearings on hand, but the races are good, both, uh, both sides are good, um, then there's no pitting on them, I'm good. I think we've got something that'll work here, and we just need to not over tighten those bolts. Seven to nine kilogram meters. <laughs> I'm gonna read the manual carefully, and try and do this next step. I'm learning. I haven't been trained, so, Read the manual, look things up. Tiny bit of lash, my best guess at 0.15 to 0.25 of a mil. About 0.1 lash in there at the moment. We've got the lash to 0.15, the spec is 0.15 to uh, 0.2 of a millimeter. I've been cleaning it as I've been going, it's pretty good. So I think I'm gonna reassemble it and get it in. <laughs> Although there's a bit of cleaning of gasket material before that goes in, so get the last few gears in and then we'll get under that truck because it's so much fun under there. <laughs> stubborn gasket material that was basically gluing the two together which is why I had so much trouble getting the diff off and to do that even the wire brush on the drill wouldn't get it off um, I was using a knife going around and I've rubbed off some burrs on the edges uh, with a file um, and I've got a little stud here uh, for any of you who don't know how to get a uh, stud out it's a pretty handy little trick old fella Cole taught me. You just stick uh, two nuts on and use uh, two spanners to lock them against each other and you can rotate the stud out pretty easily. So helps with cleaning up stuff like this. Anyway, uh, time to get some gasket goo on it and get this diff installed.
just realised the little ret spring-loaded retaining clips that go in that little hole up there in the brakes uh, to stop them flopping outwards when the springs are on the right side because I've got the springs on the wrong side at the moment which is how they were before uh, but yeah the little pins and springs are missing so that's not good they're not gonna the drums aren't gonna go on properly so let's go have a look whether I've got any in spares oh look I found a cup of tea in spares oh that wasn't what we were looking for was it okay buckets of stout bolts and brake bits um, there's one two three three pins we need four and we need these little reta spring loaded retaining clips these guys we need four of those too but that's not looking good we've got another bucket here found one more clip so we're missing two clips and well we still need two clips and a pin hmm let's keep looking oh look at that one two okay we need one more of the, there it is okay there was a full set they were just separated ah that's amazing Ah, look at that light. Okay, we've got uh, two, two lots of these. Now we can hold the brakes on properly. say finally holy moly I am glad to say goodbye to that diff so I've got these uh, drums that are from Ollie fella who was restoring some stuff as I mentioned earlier some of the backing plates he resprayed same with these so they've been sitting there for a while so I was sort of thinking of saving them for uh, my road ute when I do a bit of a resto on that but might as well use them sitting there so let's take a bit of a, a bit of a cheat to jump ahead so we don't have to uh, do any work on those those ones that came off we're a long way behind now so we could do with the ketchup. Scratch that idea for putting these on. Uh, they're thicker and they're a different profile. So, from the latest out. So I think these were from a 74, but uh, yeah, they will be saved for my uh, my 78 then these grubby ones I guess we'll give them a quick clean up and uh, they can go back on so a little less shiny but I'm not gonna repaint them we've got uh, we've got a two-week deadline to shoot for and we just need to clean them out get the oil residue out and then they'll they'll do the job just fine joints so I'm gonna put them in
honestly, I just changed one and the bearings look beautiful inside. They've all got the same markings on them. They're all changed at the same time. Um, I'm going to leave these two in here. It's a dairy truck, works on the farm. It's a really easy thing to change the tail shaft. I think I'm wasting Tess's money uh, pulling these ones out and wasting time, which is going to delay us getting to our two week target. So let's leave them in there. Oh, well, why don't we wrap it up there for the night? Um, but uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next episode.